We're moving on quickly to our first set of topical presentations. The first one is urbanisation, which is increasing rap rapidly around the world. So rapidly that I'm finding it hard to get the words out, in fact. By 2050, more than two-thirds of the world's population is going to live in a city. So that means it's absolutely essential that our cities become more energy efficient. And our next panel is going to tell you about the innovations that are possible in homes, buildings, industry and power. Now, I've been promised that each presenter will speak for no more than four minutes in order to keep our agenda moving on quickly. So please join me in setting your watches as our presenters come onto stage. From Australia, Minister Josh Frydenberg. From Saudi Arabia, Minister Alfala. And from France, Madame Virginie Schwartz. Okay, well, um, it's wonderful to be here at COP22 and to participate in another discussion on mission innovation and Australia stands ready uh, as a member uh, to double its commitment to renewable energy R&D by 2020 and we recently put an extra $800 million into an organisation called ARENA which is rolling out this sort of technology. And Australia has been at the forefront of a lot of uh, these developments and it's probably little known that by 2018, 60% of all solar PV cells around the world will have IP, intellectual property, that can be traced back to work done in Australian universities. Uh, my job today is to talk a little bit about off-grid communities. I just want to make a few simple points. Firstly, there's a great deal of energy poverty in the world. About 1.2 billion people don't have access to electricity. And a lot of those are in regional communities. In Australia, 98% of people with access to electricity are supported by the grid, and 2% are not. Of that 2%, it's mainly gas, but also a great deal of diesel. But that is changing. Now, I just wanted to give you two practical examples. Um, one involves an Indigenous community, uh, which is more than 500 kilometres away from a main city centre. Uh, during the wet season, it can be isolated for up to six months a year. So it currently has been running its power on diesel. Now, it has meant that it has to store one million litres of diesel in this Indigenous community. Now we've put in place solar PV panels, only 264 kilowatts of power, but it will go up to more than uh, one megawatt over the coming uh, year or so. And that will be a very good way of combining both diesel and solar to provide uh, significant power without the need to store as much diesel on site. And of course, there's an environmental benefit. The other example is at a major mine site in Australia, um, which is isolated. It's in Western Australia, and it's a gold and a copper mine. Today, what we have done is created uh, $40 million solar PV project there, so we have 34,000 single access uh, solar panels together with a, a 6 megawatt lithium iron battery which combined are providing the power to this mine site. As a result, 5 million litres of diesel are saved every year. There's been a 25% reduction immediately in cost and of course it has a major environmental benefit. So just to conclude, um, this off-grid work that is being done in Australia, in the agriculture sector, in the mining sector, is proving very beneficial. It provides cost savings, environmental benefit, and of course a logistical advantage because you don't need to transport or store a great deal of diesel or gas, which would otherwise be the case uh, as it currently has been. Thank you. Minister Alfala, if I could invite you to take your microphone. Well, thank you very much, and it's uh, indeed a pleasure to be here uh, in my first COP. Uh, and uh, this is, of course, uh, a great opportunity to also demonstrate that Saudi Arabia not only has signed up to uh, join COP21, 
2021, but is committed to taking a lead and finding solutions through technology and uh, innovation. Many of you know Saudi Arabia as an oil country. I'd like to reshape that and call it an energy uh, nation. We indeed have built up our economy the last 80 years on the basis of the oil economy. We developed a liking to energy, but we've also developed a competency within the kingdom, industry as well as academia, uh, in innovating and uh, creating incremental as well as hopefully in the near future some breakthrough uh, technologies. So we believe uh, as we go forward uh, in dealing with climate change that innovation and technology breakthrough are absolutely essential. When the opportunity was given to us by the United States, specifically Ernie Moniz, last year to join Mission Innovation in the days leading to COP21, we did not waste any time. We were quick to join, we were a founding nation, and we are absolutely committed to doubling our funding of clean energy research uh, in the next uh, few years. Uh, our research uh, spending today and efforts across companies and academia spans the entire uh, energy value chain as well as material science because we know hydrocarbons are uh, essential not only to mobility, energy and electricity but also to material science and these are areas that we're spending a lot. Almost every university in Saudi Arabia has a substantial research program in, uh, in renewables. Uh, and of course, the world's largest uh, oil and gas company, Saudi Aramco, spends a significant amount uh, of resources on research in the kingdom and around the world, in-house and collaboratively, to make hydrocarbons uh, or emissions uh, more uh, manageable, reduce them, as well as to introduce the kind of carbon management pathway that we are looking for. We're uh, a member in the Carbon Sequestration Leadership Forum. In fact, we're the vice chair and we intend to continue to lead in that area, not only in terms of advocating policies, but importantly also in bringing innovations. Our two largest companies, I'll use them as illustrations, the Saudi Arabia Basic Industry, SAVIC, which is a petrochemical and chemicals company, has installed this year an in-house developed technology that captures uh, 500,000 tons uh, per annum and converts it into methanol and urea. And they have many more projects that will scale this up uh, in, uh, in the years to come. Saudi Aramco has demonstrated at scale carbon capture and enhanced oil recovery. They've also acquired the startup uh, out of Cornell that will convert uh, carbon into, uh, into polymers. Uh, and of course, when it comes to the private sector, it's not only these two companies. We have played a catalytic role into bringing industry leaders from around the world to commit $1 billion in the next 10 years into a clean energy research. These are oil and gas company that Saudi Aramco has worked with. And I think this is, this is only the beginning. I think the solutions that will come and the successes that will come from this kind of effort that Mission Innovation is all about would lead to more private investment as well as more uh, countries joining like we've seen today with Finland and the Netherlands joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Minister Al Fala, and let me be one of many people to welcome you today to your first COP. We, of course, hope to see Saudi Arabia many more in the future. Um, it's interesting to hear you speak of Saudi Arabia becoming a new energy economy, and I think that that phrase was, was one that very much stood out to me. And, of course, it demonstrates the leadership that the Kingdom is taking in this important area as we move towards a low-carbon economy and the entire world transitions to a new way of being. So thank you very much for your thoughts here today. It's my pleasure now to introduce Madame Virginie Schwartz from uh, the Government of France. 
Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Last year, uh, France adopted, under the impulsion of Minister Royal, our energy transition law for green growth to implement at the national level the objectives of the COP. In this strategy, research and innovation has a major role to play, and this is why we've supported from the start the Mission Innovation um, Coalition. Um, we have committed to doubling our national clean R&D um, efforts from 440 million euros per year to almost 900 million euros per year, per year. But we're also convinced that mission innovation is about more than just these national commitments. It's also about bringing together the countries, bringing together the public and the private sector so that we can go even further together. One of the areas that we would like to go further on is smart grids. Electric grids, and especially at the distribution level, will be one of the things that we need to redesign completely to go towards a low carbon, clean energy world tomorrow. These grids will have to take upon themselves the challenge of much more renewable energy, lots of it being intermittent, much of it being from small disseminated sources. These grids will also have to integrate new types of consumption and electric mobility is of course one of these things that will change the way we see our electric grid. But they also have new opportunities, new opportunities for flexibility coming from storage at all types of all types, technology solutions, but also all size, but also opportunities coming from what we call the prosumers, the consumers of tomorrow, who will be more active in managing their own consumption and generating locally some of this consumption. These grids will also be able to take the opportunity of using the digital world of tomorrow to make us all uh, smarter. And this will happen both at the level that we knew to know today, these large, urban connected grids but also at the very local level with rural territories that have isolated or sometimes insular grid that will become uh, smarter and, and smarter and this is one area in France where we have some specific expertise through our overseas insular territories Guadeloupe, Martinique, Réunion which are really for us laboratories of low carbon territories of tomorrow to do this, we've been working in the past years on demonstration projects, several dozen, almost 40 demonstration projects, which have involved more than 10,000 French consumers finding ways to have these smarter grids, these smarter technologies integrated. In some examples, for example, in the area of Nice, we've shown that through a combination of innovative solutions, companies, industries have been able to reduce the electricity peak for up to 10 to 30 percent, changing dramatically the way that we have our electricity um, curve. In all of this, we see it only as the beginning of something that will have to spread out through the whole country, and this is why we are rolling out right now smart grid meters for all of our consumers, and by 2021, every French consumer will have a smart meter. For, in order to do this, um, the solutions will come forward in the years as the years go by. But we're really convinced that we need to mobilize everyone today. The researchers, the companies, the investors, the public authorities, but at the national and the local level, they all need to start working together now. We are convinced that mission innovation can play an important part in helping us mobilize all these stakeholders. And this is why we're very happy to be a part of it.